Hello, my name is Paul Cairns, and today I'll be talking about some printing basics. In a previous tutorial, I uh, talked about luminosity in prints and how to get the best range of tones throughout a print, getting the most detail in the highlights and the shadow area without blowing out the highlights or losing detail in the shadow area. Which is it's a very important part of my workflow. The second part of my workflow that's also very very important is soft proofing and controlling gamut or out of gamut colors. We'll begin by talking about soft proofing and what it is. Basically a computer monitor sees millions of colors and your eyes can see millions of colors as well and a print doesn't have that kind of range. It has a very limited range of colors that it can reproduce. So when you are creating a file with your uh, raw processing software and then you go into Photoshop and do some work on it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to look like that when you put it down on paper. A lot of times what will happen is that the image will not be as vibrant, have as much contrast, it might come out quite flat in compared to what you see on the screen. So what soft proofing does is it enables you to visualize it on your computer screen. It's not perfect, it's something that just kind of helps you get closer to getting a good print. Once you get to know your computer and your printer and, and uh, the papers you're working on, you can make a, a better estimate of how to uh, work with your images in order to produce the best quality prints. But soft proofing will allow you to get closer to what you want to see. So begin by selecting an ICC profile. Now what it is, uh, ICC profile is a tiny file that you download from the paper companies that you're using. Um, right now I'm using, let's say, uh, I'm using Canson. I, I've also used Epson and I uh, was using Ilford papers, but they, I believe, I believe they went out of business. But uh, Canson is what I'm using now and it's a very good paper, qual good quality paper from a really long running company. And they have ICC profiles on their website that I've downloaded and installed on my computer and when I'm working with their paper I make sure that I have the correct profile installed and I select it by going into view and then proof setup and then custom and it's already here it says device to simulate and this is the actual profile here now there is a whole bunch of other ICC profiles in here as you can see these are all Epson and uh, there's some Ilford in here somewhere and yeah this is the Ilford down here and uh, I've got some advanced black and white profiles as well. Uh, but the two papers I'm working with mostly right now are this uh, Reg and the Barta. And we'll select the Barta and press OK. Now, when you look up at your tab in where your image, your image tab here, you'll see that the ICC profile is now visible. You can see it right here. And beside that is the uh, bit depth of the image. And right now I'm using a 16-bit image. And there's my file name. Okay, so I'm going to create a duplicate file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Image and then Duplicate and just create a duplicate file. I'm going to delete these bits here. And we'll zoom in. If you want to move your photograph around like this on, on your desktop, just press spacebar and then hold it and just left click mouse and you can drag your image around very easily like that. Okay, so this image has zero um, corrections done to it. I deleted the corrections and this is just a, a, um, a file that I put out of my raw processing software into a uh, J, uh, TIFF file and it's been converted to a uh, PSD, a Photoshop document. So the colors here is what I produce with that software and when I output this image into print what's going to happen is it's probably going to go a little bit flatter so what we do is we go to view and then we press proof colors which is right here. We'll begin, begin by making sure that we have the correct uh, ICC profile selected. So we'll go there and it will automatically select proof colors and there it is. Proof colors has already been selected. Use the hotkeys so it's control Y and I go back and forth. Hopefully you can see this on your monitor um, that you can see the difference was happening and it, the contrast in this image is a little bit different. It becomes a little bit uh, flatter. That's okay. I mean sometimes 
it's not a bad thing you, you know what's happening it might work for you but if it's not working for you when you're putting in the soft when you're using the soft proof this is where you can make adjustments so for this particular image let's say I want to boost up the, the contrast I can do that just by going to curves and just just bring up the contrast a little bit more like that or let's say the color is not where I want it so you can adjust the colors from there and that's it soft proofing in a nutshell and then you compare it to the original which is over here I'll make sure the soft proof is off and you just flip back and forth between the two images and try and match up the image that you're soft proofing to the image that's not soft proofed to get as close as you can to how you would like the image to look for when you're printing and that's soft proofing so I'll delete this and go back to the original image so next we're going to talk about gamut and how to control out of gamut colors what that out of, what a, out of gamut is basically is that again your eyes and your monitor can reproduce and you know see uh, millions of different colors and uh, paper just doesn't have that kind of range even with a better printers and really good paper it just doesn't have the same kind of range as high-end monitors does so if you want to try and keep the colors within a certain range you have to control the gamut and what happens if you don't do this is that the the areas that are out of gamut can look very very bad I've seen um, images that are out of gamut that have kind of a flat looking area and I've seen images that are out of gamut that have uh, colors that are just really strange looking and I've even seen posterization of out of gamut areas on certain types of images so but basically the problem is, is it's going to make the, it's going to degrade the quality of the image and that's the bottom line and so you want to avoid that at all costs by making sure that you uh, control the gamut and you do that by using the gamut warning so what we're going to do is we're going to go up to again you always begin by making sure you have the proper ICC profile selected for the paper you're going to use because every paper is different and some papers uh, may be able to handle a range of colors that another paper cannot so you make sure you have the correct paper selected for the gamut warning and then you go into gamut warning which is here and it's also got a quick keys so shift control y and you can see that there's right in this area here I'm going to zoom in there is some magenta here some very solid color over the image and that is the gamut warning before I discuss how to remove that I'm going to show you how to change the colors here. Uh, Photoshop by default does a kind of medium gray, which is great for certain images, but uh, you may it may get lost when you're working on an image. You may not notice it, let's say, if there's lots of grays in your image. The best way to do this is to try and select a color that is very, very bright and loud or opposite of the colors you're working in, and that way there's, there's no doubt you're, you're not going to miss any of it. You're going to get it all corrected. So you want to go into uh, Edit Preferences, and this is going to go off the screen. So just go to Edit Preferences, and then Transparency and Gamut is what you want to click on that drop-down menu. The dialog, bo dialog box that opens up is your Preferences dialog box, but it's going it's right in the Transparency and Gamut Warning section. So you see this bit here that says Gamut Warning. You just click on the little box here, and you can change it to any color you want so that way you can try and find a nice color that's really really bright and obvious and is going to stand out on the print and for me I've been working a lot with this particular color it just seems like I never miss it because it's almost a I mean especially when you're dealing with uh, natural colors this thing just stands right out okay so with that shown I'm going to show you how it looks once the layer has been controlled now a lot of people they use desaturation to remove gamut and that works and it works fine but it's not always the best way to do it there's other methods of also uh, removing gamut or uh, removing colors to bring the gamut into line and the two other methods that I use is to lighten the colors which you can do on the same kind of layer it's a hue adjustment saturation layer uh, hue saturation adjustment layer uh, you can desaturate here or you can lighten the image here by adding lightness the other way is to use a uh, another layer which would be this one here the selective color layer 
this is a little bit more tricky and you have to play around with it a lot more and the bottom line is when when it comes to choosing the method you have to kind of play around and figure out which is best which is the best method for that particular image I think a lot of people generally use the desaturation because it's just the easiest and, and it's it, it's the most obvious. You know, your, your your colors are out of gamut, so you want to remove those colors. But the problem with that is a lot of times if you go overboard with it, what will happen is that the areas that you're painting out, because I'm using a mask and I'm only changing, I'm only taking out the color or reducing the color in the areas that need to be reduced is that the colors may not blend very well anymore and that can be a problem uh, especially when you're using the, the desaturation and I'll and I'll show you why hang on a second uh, okay so we'll turn on that layer and we'll go the, down to zero here now you notice on the lightness it was only at plus four and all the out of gamut area is corrected it's gone but if I go to desaturation which is minus in color I'm going to have to do a lot more than minus, uh, minus 4. I'm going to have to go closer to minus 40 before it all goes away. You probably can't see it on the screen, but I can still see some areas that are out of gamut. I'm going to keep going until it's gone, and now it's gone. And I'm at minus 56. That's a lot. Now, on this image, it, it, it looks okay. I mean, the, the, the color still looks fine to me. Um, but on certain images, when you remove that much color, the blending of the colors between the, 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 t the areas that are not being corrected and the areas that are being corrected, there's going to be a quite, a quite a change, and it could be something that's very unpleasant to look at. So this is why you need to judge it based off the image and try to correct in a method that works best for that particular image. So this, this works well, but also I think it's just too much. I mean, minus 56 is quite a lot of desaturation, so I think I'll stick with my original plan, which was plus four on the lightness, and that removes it. So that's how it's done, or the different methods of doing, but now I'm going to show you how to do it. So we'll shut off this layer, we'll close this, and this, and we're going to create a new group. And we'll call this group print two and we'll select yellow as the color. Now with that finished we're going to go up to hue saturation and we're going to click in a new layer there. And now well, we already know the numbers so I'm just going to go to plus four. Ooh, that's interesting. I wonder why that is. Let's check that out. Oh, I know why. It's because of this. It's uh, I had a color correction here because of my monitor. Even though it's color calibrated, I have to make a, a layer for color calibra uh, for color calibration or, or color correction. So what I'll do is I'll just shut this off and go back and turn this on. Okay, so. The gamut one here is shut off, and I just left the color color correction on. All right, and we'll go down to four again. Oh, that's still showing up. Okay, whatever. We'll just leave it at six then. Okay, so now basically what's happening is that the the hue saturation layer here is at plus six lightness, and it's affecting the whole image, which is not what I wanted to do. I want to only affect the areas that um, that are actually out of gamut. So we'll select the layer and we'll click on the actual f uh, mask right here and we'll press Control i on your keyboard to invert the mask. Now that the mask is inverted, you can see that uh, none of the corrections are coming through and uh, we're going to paint in the areas that we want corrected. So grab my pen and with the brush selected, normally I work with about 50% opacity, but I'm going to do this more quickly so I'm going to since it's a video, I'm going to put it around 80, just so you can get an idea how it's done. I'm going to zoom in a bit more. All right, so after you select your brush, make sure that the white uh, is selected here, and you can just go to white by pressing here or pressing there. 
and start painting in the areas that you want to remove the problem colored areas. Again, I'm doing this very quickly and I'm using broader brush, but you can narrow your brushes and go into an area more carefully and using a lower opacity, which you should do if you're doing an actual for print. I'm just doing it as an example. Uh, use bracket keys, right bracket to enlarge the size of your brush and left bracket to make it smaller. Just keep going until all the gamut warning is gone. And as you can see, it's mostly on the edges where there is a definite bit of contrast going on. But those are the areas that will definitely stand out in a print. And that's it. So, zoom out. And that's how you control the, ga the gamut on your photograph. Okay, so I also wrote a very extensive bit on my blog about this that this video will be attached to. So there will be a lot of information in there in the blog that will show you how to uh, install the ICC profiles and a little, give you more information about ICC profiles and also a written version of this tutorial as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you check out my blog. If you like the video please say so by clicking that thumbs up sign and have a good day. Bye bye.